Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 21 of On the Horizon. I'm your host, Andy Whiteside. I've got, uh, what's your name again? No, I've got Eric no. that with me. Uh, mm-hmm. Eric is, uh, I was joking with Eric a minute ago, it's my third podcast of the day, so I'm a little, I'm a little burnt out. Uh, but Eric's uh, with me. I, I th- actually looked down and started noticing your spider uh, ski gear sweater. And yes. caught my attention. I've never seen one, uh, never seen one quite like that. Quite, quite as blue. It's, you know, Costco special, but man, it's, it's a very comfortable jacket. Very comfortable. So that's funny. I have, um, I have like five of those from Costco, not one that new or that modern, I guess. Is that new? Yeah, it's brand new. It's brand new. It's a lot fuzzier. The other ones kind of have a cable, yeah. cable knit approach. I, I definitely, I don't know. I like the cable. I bought mine with the idea that within a year or two, I'd be living part-time in the mountains of Utah. Um, it kind of like wishful thinking kind of thing. Um, hadn't happened yet, but, uh, when I do, I'm going to have like five Costco spider sweaters that I can yeah, wear just around as I, as I walk around park city, Utah and act like I'm, uh, one of those guys, uh, one of a, a local, a local, a local, you know, you get, that's a good you get the gloves too. You get yeah. the I don't know how many people from Park City are local, though. They're part-time locals. Yeah, local enough to, you know, contribute to the to the air and and. Oh yeah, and the cost of living and. Hey, living oh and oh yeah, there's, there's that too. <laughs> That's nice to talk off the charts. Well, Eric, uh, how's it been going? It's good. It's good. Everything's ramping up. And speaking of, there's a lot of snow here now. If you want some, we've got some. I heard. It, it it hit pretty hard. And, uh, you know, for the first time in a long time, I've actually, you know, you, you scrape the driveway, you salt the ground just in case. Yeah. It was a, it was a quick process. I was surprised. And well, I know you guys get all there. excited about that happening. I just have to assume that a month or two into that excitement, it starts to wane a little bit. Yes. Well, when the, when it doesn't rise above a certain temperature and it's been, you know, in the 36 to 32s, but like this morning 22 22 degrees it's it's yeah. chilly it's but it's chilly. a dry 22 it's a dry 22 you know it doesn't take that it, you, you're not feeling it bite through all of your clothes so that's when you can wear the spider jackets because spider jackets have a little breeze to them <laughs> hey, so if i remember when we met out there you you didn't even have a car you had a motorcycle or something oh uh, no i took a car to that you can't you can't i mean slushy oh wait no, I was, I was in a car. I was yeah. in a car because it's, it's slush and ice, ice, that bike just flips right out from underneath. Yeah. It's not a very friendly approach. Do you have uh, do you have the four wheel drive and all the requirements for out there? Or do you? Have- <laughs> I do. I do. I have a truck, but I, I also drove my little electric car, which barely gets anywhere. It's so I, I was sporting the electric car that time. <laughs> yeah, I think I do they pave it. They, they get it all, they get it all, you know, cleaned up for you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, as I mentioned, almost every call, I'm excited about uh, getting the opportunity to do something out there someday, but for now, I'll just have to come stay for a week or two every winter and yeah. enjoy it and ski and that kind of stuff. It's an amazing place. No doubt. Thank you. Much appreciated. And you're always welcome. All right. Yeah. You know what? I should schedule a meeting to come out and do the podcast in person and be a yeah. big, big write off be fantastic where would we do it all right so the blog this week they were recording which by the way the um the videos of these podcasts are starting to go live on the zintegra youtube channel so if it helps check it out out there as well but the uh the blog reviewing is workspace 1 2111 so what came out in november of 2021 uh, uh and mac os freestyle orchestrator now automates mac management so is this Freestyle Orchestrator been out for a while just in general? Freestyle Orchestrator is, it hasn't, it's been more prototypey, and now it's like really starting to show what it can do. So you had access to it, at least in a primitive sort with the, with the initial release, but this is where we roll out everything for Mac OS and Windows. Okay. And I so it's uh, on par for both operating systems at this point. Yeah, we're, we're starting to do it for all the operating systems. We're starting to do it for devices as well. But the, this is where the first two start, yeah. Windows and Mac. 
I was having this conversation with one of my sales guys the other day, and they said something about uh, you know iOS and Android. And then I stopped and said, "Well, how much? I mean, for most of our customers, what do we what do we manage with them?" And it's like, "Oh, Windows and Macs." And it's like, "Okay, there you go. I mean, that's where that's where these tools really apply." Um, as we start to get into a world of, you know, endpoint management of all the different flavors. Yes. And I'll say we already do Android and iOS and all that stuff happens natively to UEM, but operating systems like Windows and like Mac are a lot more complicated. They have a lot more moving parts, whereas like with a, a device, we just send a profile and we send an application. That application automatically installs. We can inject some of the, the profile information into that and it just magically works. Whereas with Mac and Windows, we have a lot more of these moving parts. We have the registry that we have to deal with. Maybe we have to go through a DEP or, or one of these other solutions that, well, Apple has a whole enterprise management infrastructure that we have to go through. So it's, there's a lot of moving parts and freestyle is meant to, freestyle orchestrator is meant to, to segue between all those different moving parts. So give me a description of what freestyle orchestrator is. Okay. Freestyle orchestrator is basically a low code, no code type of approach. You drag in the different features. You say, I want to install this. You target the different applications that you want to install. Maybe you need to uninstall things first, run that workflow. But it's basically workflow building with low code, no code, drag and drop. So Windows, uh, well, uh, anybody could do it for the most part. Yes, it is simplified so that anybody, even a child could do it. Well, a child that knows IT. Let's just go with that. So Eric, now, before we go into talking about some of the options or some of the um, different elements that we describe in the, you guys describe in the blog here, I have a question for you. Can you have yeah. any idea what the numbers are in terms of um, uh, IT deployments that are Windows versus Mac mm. and where that's come and gone from over the last decade? I should have this. It is in the millions. And I would say the tens to hundreds of millions that we have that we engage with on uh, since I would say the life of the product for the most part. But every device that goes out, oh, it's you know life of the product is probably in the years. Every time that we deploy a device, it's going through our system, and then we basically push profile information down to it. So it's in the millions, tens, hundreds. But how would you compare like the numbers? Is is it ten percent Mac in the workforce, or? Um, I would say majority is Mac right now. Probably no, sixty to seventy percent. You think there's more Macs than uh, PCs out there being managed? When it mainly because with Macs that was we were the best tool for the job. Oh. <clears throat> uh, so in your so in your customer footprint, there's a lot of Macs. There's a lot of Macs. There's a lot wow. of Macs. Windows became more prevalent, especially with, you know, Dell getting involved and saying, hey, you need to use Dell, uh, Dell products more. So therefore, we've, we've kind of divided that up a little bit more, but we weren't uh, as fluid and Intune was always there first, um, Intune being a free tool. And if you're only using Windows, that can be enough. But if you're using a Mac and a Windows machine and Android or and iOS, when you've got all of those, then we're the best footprint for it. Yeah, which I don't think all is all that uncommon, at least for uh, I, I want to say the normal user. But uh, yeah, I, I've got one of all of those. Uh, some yeah. are managed and some aren't. But I don't think it's all that uncommon, especially when you start bringing in uh, BYOD, partially managed BYOD devices. Yes. Yeah. I mean everybody's going to bring something to the table. I, I'm not going to get a corporate phone. I don't want a corporate phone. I want to choose my phone and then, and, and then enroll it. Yeah. And yeah, that's going to be up to, <laughs> IT is going to have to support that. Yeah. Well, uh, you were going to say something. I interrupted you. I'm going to jump into the device onboarding yes. use case, unless you had something else you want to cover. No, that is, that is just fine. 
So the blog kind of introduced the concept of the freestyle orchestrator, and then it jumps into the next section, which is an example of where you would use it for device onboarding. Kind of walk us through how this thing applies to this and example of how it might uh, be leveraged. Well, the beauty of it is that screenshot itself is, is pretty telling on the blog itself, where you have, uh, it's kind of a, a pain, but yeah, that's it. The, the idea being, I can, I, as long as I know information about the device, maybe if it's attached to a user, maybe it's enrolled to a user, and I can say, I need to run a particular action on it. IT is going in and saying, we need to uninstall this. We need to then install that with these different settings. Very easy to just run that script. And if, it, if you don't have, there's a library of functions that you can take and then target certain activities on different devices or certain activities on different installers, like install this silently, remove this silently and so forth. Those functions are built in. Then I can just drag all that in, target the particular executable. There's a script. You can see the code in the on the right side. If you need to adjust that code, you can manually go in and adjust it. Yep. But after dragging and dropping and putting all the scripts in place, then you can trigger it to see what the actions would take. Yeah. It's so, so Eric, is this a matter of step one, get the agent on the device, and then after that, it phones home and you tell it what all needs to be done for the rest of the onboarding? It's uh, it's enrollment based. So when you enroll the device, it will communicate with the back end. Mm -hmm. and, and at that point, it will perform all of its functions to, to push what it needs to. Hub needs to be installed. Intelligent Hub needs to be in there in order for it. That's your agent that yeah. you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. So the enrollment process will push out the, the hub, and then the hub will start understanding what its next step or steps are until you finish the uh, onboarding process that has been laid out by the freestyle orchestrator. Yes. Now, I will say there are some provisioning solutions built into Windows and Mac that you don't even need that hub. It's just using the native solutions built into the operating systems. So as long as that enrollment's there and there is, a, there is an understanding between the systems, you're good to go. Yeah. Okay. And, and I'm neck deep in trying to onboard systems over here. Yeah. Uh, it is a problem that has been around for, uh, I don't know, 30 years, 20 years, uh, only gotten worse because of the need for um, remote onboardings. Like we don't, you yes. don't come to the office on your first day anymore or your first week. Um, you don't meet up at a conference anymore and hand your device to the IT gurus to get it all updated and patched and everything. It all has to be onboarded updated and even off off boarded you know all remote <laughs> yes updated. yes yeah you have to have the people coming and going <laughs> and yeah it's but you you bring and bring up a good point how many thousands of times have you had to do this yeah. and these should be repeatable processes these should be things that we can script put in place and just kick off without having to babysit it yeah um, like the next, this. Go ahead. Sorry. I like this. I mean, go ahead. So the, so the next uh, example you guys give of where this might apply is a uh, complex application installs where you're doing something that's as system level as your antivirus or malware protection or all the above. Uh, for example, let's say you're going to replace your um, antivirus solution with Carbon Black. Um, or let's say maybe you never even had one. Uh, maybe it's as complex as you had one. You have to uninstall it at a system level and then install the new one, all this needs to be done, you know, really deep into the operating system. Yeah. And you may even have to go in and do some registry edits. You need to chop some of those things out. We can script that. I mean, you could script it before, but we can now give you notifications on every step of the way, what's happening. Maybe there's an exception to the rule or whatever else, but all that can be embedded into the code. Yeah. Or no code, you know, depends on how deep you want to get into it. You know, for me, this is the, again, the third podcast today, second time today where I've seen technology that I longed for 10 years ago when I was doing this stuff. And um, it makes you want to jump back in, roll up your sleeves, 
me personally get back involved in doing some of these things. And, and then reality soaks in that I've got many, many other things to do. But um, yeah. this has been something that has been needed for the sysadmin, the desktop administrator sysadmin for a very long time. And we, we kind of got that on the side of uh, iOS and Android because those things were built to be managed more or yeah. less early on uh, and managed remotely because you you just they just needed to be on the network somewhere, uh, not land WAN necessarily, but a network so that they could get home. Uh, in the side so in Windows and Mac, you know, we grew up on the network or sneaker net and things that didn't require such complex configurations remotely. Well, I was I was talking I was talking with some people about Web 1.0 and Web 2.0 and Web 3.0, and and speaking of sneaker net and modems and BBSs and it's like you, you don't even know where all this came from. And I I was playing Doom over serial cables way yeah. <laughs> a long time ago. Anyway, just. Sorry, just a little flashback there. <clears throat> so I had but, that moment uh, today. My kids are here at the company interning over the holiday. And um, I was trying to explain the difference, which most people in our industry don't know anyway, uh, the difference between streaming applications and presenting applications, right? Stream, mm -hmm. you're actually moving the bits and bytes down to the endpoint and they're actually executing in a sandbox or minimalistically or something. Um, then versus presentation, you know, we're doing a presentation layer protocol uh, and then I had to explain that uh, when Internet, Internet Explorer 6 came out, Microsoft was telling people you wouldn't need to write applications anymore. You would just use a browser for everything. And uh, that's slowly becoming reality. But it's, it um, I guess, 30 years after that was said to me, maybe 25, at least, at least 25. And yeah. uh, we still have a majority of client server apps. Yeah. Yeah. And we don't need to anymore. We really don't. But it is what it is. Technology takes a while. Uh, I always think about turning the Titanic. It takes a while. You have to tell, give some clear notice of where you're going. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we're trying to do. Gotta avoid the iceberg. Is that what you're saying? Yes, avoid the iceberg. Call it out way in advance or slow down. You know, slow down a little. It, it looks like hard it's to say in front tech. of you, but it's, it's 25 years away. Yeah, yeah. It, it, tech works like that. There are those, it, it's a long, stretchy process, how often we get into it. Now, so one place that I would, go yeah, go ahead. If people want to, if people want to learn more about this uh, freestyle orchestrator, what do you recommend? So, I mean, really these, these links that are on this page, the freestyle orchestrator website, fantastic. You go into the resources section. Uh, I would say the podcast, if you want to kind of a deeper dive of how it works is also on that page. Hmm. Okay. So that there is also a tech preview that lets you jump into it and explore it yourself, see some, see some of the low code, no code pieces, see how really a lot of the scripting is just command line script. And for the most part, it builds itself for you from canned, uh, canned commands. But just keep in mind that you can do more with uh, getting in a little bit, doing a little research and maybe doing a little code. Yeah. It's not really code, it's just command line, but. So scripting, we'll right? Just some, scripting. some very basic scripting, which, you know, if you're, if you're me and you have to do some scripting, you just go find what you need off the internet and copy and paste. Copy, paste, yeah. yeah. Maybe tweak a little bit. Just trust it, just trust it. <laughs> well, make sure it's trustworthy. Trust, so, trust, but verify, test. In trust, other but verify, testing, yeah. love testing. Yeah. Well, Eric, that's the end of the uh, blog. I appreciate you jumping on and covering this and I uh, hope you have a happy holiday and we'll see you again in January. Yes, and you too. Enjoy yourself. Yep. All right, sir. Well, enjoy the, uh, the weather. And do you, did we, did you, what we were talked about, do you ski? Do you go I, out? I don't ski as much as I'd like to, okay. but uh, I, I tried snowboarding two years ago and my butt hurts. Um, I Still just hurts? need, it's, it, it, I'm butt hurt, I guess, is really what it ends up. <laughs> it should be easier for me, but I'm I'm tall and I am clunky. And it the ground is really far away from me these days. Yeah. It's 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 not so much the falling, it's the getting up. It kinda. Yeah. It's both. And and the times that I've done it, it's ice, all ice. And I need to get there when it's nice and powdery, like it is right now, actually. Yeah. I should yeah. totally take it. 
I'm longing to get there. Well, I'll be out there in a couple of weeks. Uh, maybe we'll look you up. Yes. Feel All free. Right. Well, I appreciate the time and we'll do it again in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Sounds good. Thanks.